Welcome! In this video I'm going to be taking a look at this PlusTech OptiBook 4900 book scanner. So if you find this video helpful and you want to purchase one of these, I'll put a link to it in the description. If you use that link it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost anything extra. So this says it's compatible with Windows 8, 10. I'm guessing probably 11. I think this is also compatible with Mac, so we'll check all that out. So this can scan up to 2 millimeters from the edge of the book. So you place the book on here like this and it can scan up right into the middle. So it's up to A4 size, has LED light source. Here's a little diagram on the side. It's showing how you orient the book here, and it's showing how you don't have to press it down like this, so you're not going to be as likely to damage the book. So let's get this open. So here we have a manual. This looks like a USB-B to USB-A cable, and a power adapter. Power on this is 24 volts at 0.75 amps, or 18 watts. I think I'm lifting the whole scanner out there. I'm going to pull the box off my bench and I'll lift the scanner up on my bench. Star from stuck on here pretty good. Pull the scanner out. So this thing actually looks like a huge book here. Here we have the opening. So let's take a quick look at the manual. This looks like an offer for cloud storage. Here's a quick start guide. So it looks like there's a lock on the bottom of the scanner. We'll take a look at that in a minute. It says plug the USB into the computer and install the Bookmaker software on Windows or Mac. Plug it in, turn it on. It says make sure the inner book spine is closely leaned on the scanner's flattened edge and a line of starting point at which the arrow sign is pointed. Commence to scan by pressing one of the scan buttons on the scanner. So we have color, grayscale, and black and white. This talks about creating a document. This talks about preview, editing, and exporting. It can do searchable PDAs. This talks about data capture and note taking, has OCR capability, this talks about scanner settings, search and find, and troubleshooting. So I will be going over the software a little bit. Looks like the warranty here. And here we have this flash drive with the software on it. So let's look at the bottom. So this would be the lock. So it looks like to unlock it, we will press that in and slide this over. And if we press it down, it will lock it. Okay. And we have four rubber feet here. Here are the buttons, power button, a little threaded insert on the back. I'm not sure what that's for, but we have the USB-A and power. Okay, so typically you would hang this off the edge of your desk so you can fit a book on here. Here we have the scanning platform. We have the backing piece and this has foam behind it and it shows the different sizes. We have letter A4, B5, and A5. There's an indicator light. Let me check the cables here. The USB cable is just under five feet. And the power cable is around six foot. So I'll plug this into power. I'll plug USB into the back. And I'll plug this into my computer. So let's head over to it and I'll get the software installed. Okay, so I'm on my computer. Now I copied the contents of the flash drive to a folder. And that would be this bottom here. It's the PlusTech Bookmaker V3.0. But I was searching online and I found a newer version. So I downloaded that. Now it took a long time to copy that from the flash drive. It was much faster actually to download it. So I'll open up the newer version and we'll get this installed. It's asking for permission. I'll hit OK. So I'll open it up. So it's in the application folder, and then it has a folder for Plus Tech, and I also have one of the other scanners, so that's here, but we want to go to Bookmaker. So I'll open that up, and I'll open up the software. It says unable to find the scanner, so I'll turn it on. We have scan and export document or view documents. Let's say scan and export, and this is a book that I'm going to be scanning. So it looks like maybe this is ready. So I have a book here. This is the first edition of the Ashley Book of Knots. So let's try scanning it. So I'm actually going to go in a couple pages here. So I'm going to place the book against the scanner as far as I can get, and I'll slide it up. Now the top of the page is not able to go to the edge here because the book binding is a little bit proud of the pages. So I'll do a gray scan, so I'll press the button. Doesn't seem to be scanning. Let's try it again. So I don't know if this ever saw that the scanner was connected, so I'll actually quit the software now that I have it turned on and open it back up. Let's open up my book again. Let's try this.
Okay, so it worked that time. Looks like we have the first page scanned. So let's go to the next page. I'll do the same thing here. And I'm going to alternate back and forth. Now I have a blank page here, I'm going to scan it, but certainly you could skip it. So I'll jump in here, there are some photographs, I'll scan one of these pages. And I'll jump into the middle of the book. And I'll find a good page to scan. Okay, so we've scanned a couple pages. So with that edge scanning here, I think it makes it easier on the book, although it does put a little bit of stress in the book. If you have a very fragile book, this may not be the best scanning option. So let's take a look at the software here. So at the top here, we have buttons for the different scan options for color, gray, and black and white. We have settings. We have different rotation modes. We have zoom in, zoom out, crop, insert a page, single page, double page, note mode, thumbnails, page list, and export PDF. Let's take a look at the settings. So the file format is JPEG, scanning mode is color. Okay, so I'm recording this voiceover as I edit this video, and I was a little confused when I first used this. The scanning mode actually sets the settings for each of these modes. So if you set it to text, you could have the resolution be 300, you could turn D screen on, and then when you go to gray, you'll set the settings for gray. So that could be 150 DPI, and color could be 600. You could set it for each of the different scanning modes, and then you need to save the setting. And then when you press the button on the scanner, it's going to use those settings for each of the modes. Resolution is 300, this goes up to 1200. We have D-screen, auto-rotate, auto-crop, penetration removal, bleed-through removal, and continuous scanning every X number of seconds. Okay? So we have our scans on the left here. If I press the arrow buttons, I can go through them. Let's see if I can select them all. Looks like I can only select one at a time, or but maybe down below here, looks like I can check them off. But I don't see a select all, let's see. Hmm. So I guess I'll just select them one at a time and I'll hit auto rotate. Didn't seem to auto-rotate. I'm not sure what that does. Let's try that again. Let's just try it on this image. 
I'm not sure what that's doing. Let's try manually rotating, okay? So I may have to play around with the auto rotation modes when you're scanning. So let's see if these are in the proper orientation. Okay, that looks good. So let's try exporting a PDF. So let's choose our export type. Let's go to searchable PDF. Language is English. And we'll save that to our desktop. Doesn't seem to want to let me change the document name. We'll hit save. Let's check out that file. Okay, so here's the PDF. It looks like it did some OCR on this. So you can see we can select the text. We can search for it. Let me search for lanyard. And we can see lanyard here. So that works very nice. Now I'm not seeing a lot of options here to change things. So if we have the crop, looks like we can go in here and manually crop but I don't see anything for brightness or contrast. So it seems very basic. Let me see if I can find out where it's saving these files. So I'm not sure where these are saving these documents. If we go up to document here, we can say export PDF or original files. And for export type, I think we can say original formats. And we'll hit save. Okay, so then here we have our JPEGs. Let's try scanning some more with some settings set. So let's change the scanning. Let's leave the scanning mode at color. Let's change resolution to 600. We'll say auto rotate, auto crop, auto deskew, penetration removal. We'll save, close, and let's scan some more pages. Let's also switch this to two page mode. So I'll scan a few pages. So I don't think the double page mode was quite what I was expecting it to be. So I'll go back to single page mode. I'll remove that scan. We'll try this again. Okay, so I scanned a couple pages here. Let's click through them. And this did not seem to do any auto rotating or auto cropping. So maybe I just don't know how to use it or maybe it's not good at that. Let me save these out. So I'm going to select this directory and I'll see if I can export the whole directory. So it looks like it exported the files, but not as a directory. So let's open these up. So the scans look very nice. They look very crisp. I'm guessing they're very accurate, but I don't know that the processing in the scanning software is great. I think a person might be better off using some other software to do post-processing, depending on what you're doing. Unless I'm missing something here, this software seems to kind of be lacking. So if you're scanning single pages out of books, I think this could work very well. If you're scanning a whole book, I think it could work well, but then doing something with it after you scan it might take a little extra skill. You might have to do some manually processing or use some software to batch process, and that's a little beyond the scope of this video. But when I exported it as a PDF, it did make a searchable PDF, so it was able to do OCR and such. Now how accurate is that? I'm not completely sure, but it did seem to work. So that's the Plus Tech Optibook 4900 Book Scanner. Now I did find this very easy to use, it seemed very easy to position the book up against the edge here, and it scanned somewhat quickly, but the overall process is a little slow. If you have a long book, like this book is over 600 pages, it's going to take a while to scan the whole thing. But I do think it had pretty good accurate scans, and it scanned to JPEG, and once you have those JPEGs, you can do whatever you want with them. So you can process them with the software that came with the scanner, or you could export the JPEGs and do something on your own. So a scanner like this is not for everyone, but if you have a special use case where you need to scan books, this could be a good fit.
Now, along with scanning books, you can just scan documents with this too. It can act as a regular flatbed scanner. Now, you do have to use their software to scan with this, at least on the Mac. It doesn't work with the built-in Mac scanning software, so it must use some sort of proprietary interface. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.